good man. Hugh, we're just looking ahead to next week. We were hearing Shane Anderson give your horse, Moraine, a very big chance. Uh, what do you make of it? Uh, I think he's a good chance. He's a little bit of a, He's under the radar. You know, and he, he's certainly not a top three pick, but I think he's, a, he's certainly in the top five or six. You're having to get down to quite a low weight for you, aren't you, to, to make the ride? Ah, uh, yeah, 53 and a half. That's about three pound under my normal weight. What do you make about the trip, Finn? Because he's been running over shorter trips. Do you think that the step up and trip will be an issue? Do dying for the trip. And in terms of ground, I know the forecast says that it will be a little bit maybe rain over the next few days, but ground will be ways well, versatile, isn't he? Well, he wants... Um, yeah, he doesn't want it too wet. Are you in Melbourne he at the moment, Hugh? Yeah, I've been here for a month training. I've been in, I've been based in Melbourne since Caulfield Guineas weekend. Hugh, what sort of horse do you prefer to ride in a Melbourne Cup? Is there a sort of set horse when you... I know, obviously, you want to be on the best horse in the race. That goes without saying. But is there a set horse that... Do you, would you like a flashy type? Would you like a grinder? What sort of horse do you want to go to war with? Well, you want a horse with a turn of foot. Uh, and, and this horse I'm riding hasn't got that. He... He might have it over two miles. I rode him work the other day, and he um, he, he really picked up the final three furlongs. But in, in his races, and as you pointed out, over the 2,000 metres, he, he's, he's a real grinder. Um, so with the 53 and a half, I'll be very mindful of that. Um, but I, I think over the two miles, he, he will show us a good turn of foot. But it, it's, you need a turn of foot in this race. You can't grind it out. The draw's coming up soon. Where would you like to be berthed for Moran? Look, I'd like to be in the first half a dozen on him uh, for that reason. You know, he's not he's not going to make up. You know, he doesn't have a quick three lengths for me, so I don't want to be too far back. But by the t same token, I don't want to be out of my comfort zone. I think if I could draw, oh, look, I haven't thought too much about it. I don't want to be too wide. You know, anywhere from one what, one to ten would be perfect. Probably not the first couple because he's not great away. It takes him a little while to get in the stride. How confident are you with Mered? You, you, say, you say, sound quite relaxed about the whole thing at this stage, Hugh. Uh, I'm, I'm, conf I'm quietly confident. I mean, I was due to ride him last year. He was narrowly beaten in the, in the McKinnon which traditionally is is a pretty good guide, although over the last few years with the influence of the internationals, um, it's become probably less of, less of an influence. But um, as I said, the horse is dying for the two miles. He, he won the Bart Cummings last year in convincing style, over 2,500 and... Look, I've ridden him, I think, six or seven times, and I thought that was his best... Uh, the best feel he gave me was, was in that race over 2,500. So, look, good, good stuff. I, I don't think he's got quite. Can you hear me? Hello. What's that? You sorry? Yeah. Look, I, I I don't think this horse has quite the class of say American or or Dunedin to more of an extent. Um, but what he does have is a good weight. You know, he's got a winnable weight. Horses with 53 to 54 and a half are the ones that win this race, and he's in that range. So I've been working at it for a month, um, feeling strong, I'm feeling confident and looking forward to it. Good stuff, Hugh. Thanks for your time, and, uh, and best of luck next week.